Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the opening bell. But boy, we got some trading going on this morning. A CPI print, folks. You probably know the number, 9.1%, the headline inflation number on a month-over-month -month basis, folks. Now, these numbers are for June. It's already July 13th. You could make the case that things were really peaking in June, especially when you take into consideration energy prices, gasoline prices at the time were over $5. I think right now, just watch on Bloomberg, there's something like 460 national average down almost 10% from that number. Keep it in mind, but month over month basis, 1.3%. Folks, if you annualize the month over month basis and listen, you can't annualize the number because energy prices contributing a large factor, uh, almost impossible. I always use the term almost, folks. Anything can happen. Almost impossible for energy prices to keep going at the rate they are. But if you extrapolate out the number on a month-over-month -month basis of 1.3%, you're dealing with, what, 15.6%. Multiply 1.3 times 12, man. 15.6% inflation if you add the month-over-month -over, -month over 12 years. Uh, no matter what happens, you're above the expectations. The headline inflation number was supposed to be 8.8. .8. You come in at 9.1. Month over month, the headline number was supposed to be 1.1%, I believe. You come in at 1.3. Quite a market sell-off. How's 125 S&P points? I think that's what it was. 121 to be exact. 121. You just had a 3% drop in the S&P. Now, I don't know what happened. You know, you, you got a little bit of an acceleration at 815, right? This market, somebody was getting ahead of it in the wrong direction. You trade from 3836 up to above 3870. And boom, just like that, the market sells off, as I said, about a 3% drop. Now, right now you have the S&Ps. They are positive by about 1.3% right now. Uh, positive, negative 1.3%. Uh, we're up almost 25 points off of the low that you had at 845. You get the NASDAQ 100 off 1.8%. You talk about a drop, man. You go from almost 12,000. We were 30 points shy of that level coming into the number at 830. You trade down almost 500 points, folks. I think that's more than 4% in the NASDAQ 100, right? Phew. Dow off about 297 right now, 30,672. You see the drop there, about 800 points. We got action everywhere, man. Bitcoin, very correlated to this market, folks. I've pulled it up before. Bitcoin, very correlated to the NASDAQ 100 is the best index uh, in terms of correlation. Yeah, it deviates at times, but you see the drop off, man. Pretty remarkable, right? That Bitcoin trading dramatically on a CPI print. Wasn't always the case, but it has become an asset class, especially Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, you see the drop, drops more than a thousand. We're at about 19,145 right now. Crude contract dropping and then popping. Uh, I saw a tweet out there by Joe Weisenthal from Bloomberg saying crude trades lower on report of higher crude prices. And it's kind of true. This report, a lot of energy prices, right? We'll break it down a little bit. Uh, we got a couple great guests, folks. We're talking to our man Kevin Hanks after the first break, as we do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then we're talking to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour. We'll be talking some Forex. Absolutely great day to have a conversation with Teddy. We'll talk some Forex. We'll talk some Euro-dollar parity. I'm sure we'll talk some yen, and I'm sure we'll talk some crude oil as well. Don't forget to check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report on the front page of TFNN, folks. We'll ch talk to him at 40 past the hour. All right, let's jump into the number. Headline inflation, 9.1% from a year earlier in a broad-based advance. Largest gain since the end of 1981. I mean, check out this chart. Relentless. It's a great word to surmise what's going on, folks. Uh, do you see any turn in that number, folks? you got to see some turn in that number, okay? Until we see a real turn in that headline number and... Hopefully, this is the peak, okay? Now, the core peak was in March, I believe, or May, right? May, I believe the core peak was in May at 6.5 something. Uh, we'll get into the core number, but that was a little bit hot as well. So you could make the case that the core has peaked, uh, but energy prices matter, folks. They matter in a big way. Now, this number, we're getting some old data here, all right? It's already July 13th. This data is for June. And it takes in the, the an average of the month. I think it's the middle of the month somehow or an average or some capacity to that degree. We've come down from those levels on energy. You That is undeniable right now. I'm not sure it will hold, okay? Uh, but you're talking about change month over month. Folks, we're still heating up. We are still 
heating up on a month over month basis on the change in CPI. That one's the most stunning of all, folks, okay? Because take this into consideration. The 11 months prior, the market is aware of what happened to the CPI. Really, all we're asking for right now, as in the report that we get this morning, is tell me what happened last month. So yes, you take the month over month number, you add that to the 11 months you already know, that gives you the year over year number. Month over month, that's a huge beat, okay? 1.3%. The expectation was for a number of 1.1%, I believe. Let's jump over here because they have all the numbers exactly. Uh, headline CPI, 1.3. The number they were looking for was 1.1. On a core basis, okay, you take out food and energy, and on a month-over-month -month basis, from May till June, CPI was up 0.7%. Folks, annualized, that's 8.4%. Core, 8.4% core from May to June. That's not a slowdown, okay? They were looking for 0.5% on the core number and 1.1% on the headline. Now, energy prices surged 7.5% in the month of June, up 41.6% on a 12-month basis. The food index increased 1%. Shelter costs, again, this is June. The real estate market, you could make a case, is really rolling over the last four weeks, six weeks, maybe the last couple months, but this is still June data, okay? So you're potentially going back about six weeks at the beginning of June. Uh, shelter costs, which make up about one third of the CPI. So if we get a pullback in real estate, okay, if we get a pullback in rents, that could have a huge impact of the CPI when you look at the number that it has there in terms of one third of the CPI rose 0.6% for the month, up 5.6% annually. It's the sixth straight month, again, reminding you, this is June we're talking about, that food and home rose at least 1%. Rental costs, 0.8% was at the rise in June, the largest monthly increase since April 1986. It's going to be an interesting one to see how rent goes, okay, because it's very difficult to buy a house right now with interest rates on the rise, right, and with elevated levels. That should hurt demand for houses, potentially bringing down the cost of purchasing a home. Does that translate to rent it should okay because people investing in properties that are buying those properties as investments need to make that money back for rent so at some capacity it's going to be correlated right but very difficult to buy a house right now those people are going to be forced into the rental market well guess what um nonetheless it's going to be an interesting one rent cost remarkable that that was still rising almost a full percent in june and yeah, check out, we'll finish it up with this. Much of the inflation rise came from gasoline prices, which increased 11.2% on the month and just shy of 60% for a 12-month period. We are down from those levels, okay, right now. It's July 13th. We're down from those levels. Those numbers contributed 11.2% on a monthly basis to the upside. Gasoline alone. Not talking about energy. Energy up, but not quite 11.2%. Just gasoline. 11.2% on the month. Just shy of 60%, 60% rise. But hey, I think we had gas trading about five bucks at that point. Not too hard to be up 60% from a year ago. Electricity costs rose 1.7%. New and used vehicles up as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hinks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now. You're chopping around at about 37.71. We're negative by 52 points. That's 1.4% in the red right now for the S&Ps. You're looking at a NASDAQ 100, basically at 2%. Right on the dock, the dot, the Dow, even the Dow, off more than a full percent right now. And the Russell, off 1.1% as well. Crude, trading right now at 95.82. You talk about some volatility, man. Crude trades from 96.75, down more than $2.00. Up more than $2 right back into action. And right now we're trading at 95.72. Almost flat technically on the session for crude. And we got the 10-year above 2%. The 10-year trades down to a low on that acceleration to about 117.24. I mean, look at even the bounce you just got. You just got a bounce of about 15 ticks to the upside. You traded down more than a full point in a heartbeat from 118.25 down to 117.24. Right now, you're back at about 118. That puts the 10-year at about 3.03% right now. All right, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with fast market your host kevin hinks tom white they break down the day's market action and it doesn't get much faster than uh the action since 8 30 this morning folks kevin hinks good morning good morning tommy o'brien bumpy morning here for the markets as we got some pretty catastrophic data out of um cpi data tommy but here's the thing that it, it, it this is going to get really tricky today why because the question traders are going to have to ask themselves is, is this data stale? And here's why, Tommy. June 13th, let's go back one month from today. June 13th, crude oil prices, $121.09. Today, 94 That being said, energy, energy CPI up 7.5%. Gasoline up 11.2%. Energy commodities up 10.4%, Tommy even though they've gone from 121 to 94. Grains, uh, you've got soybeans, we're, we're trading 1708, now trading 1327. Corn, trading 766, now 585, Tommy. That being said, food higher across the board, up 1%. Food at home up 1%, food away up 0.9. New vehicles up 0.7. Used vehicles up 1.6. Apparel up 0.8, Tommy. This is inflation virtually across the board. 20 out of 21 metrics are, uh, are, are, are positive here, Tommy. But the question that everyone's going to have to ask is, is this data stale? Because the higher prices that we got in this reading 
don't match what you're seeing in crude oil, what you're seeing in grains, what you're seeing in metals and, and copper. It doesn't match up. So what do you pay attention to? The data that might be three weeks old or what you're seeing since the last Fed meeting and these collapse of commodity prices, Tommy? It's uh, a great analysis, as usual, Kevin. Some of those numbers jumped out at me as well. Uh, of course, energy prices, because that one, a little bit undeniable, as the, the price of the pump coming down a little bit. Uh, those numbers for gasoline, man, 11.2% on a monthly basis. They were up on the yeah. June number. Uh, but as you said, it's July 13th already, this this data out for June. And we're almost halfway through the month of July, and we've seen some easing. Uh, some of those numbers jumped out at me as well. What happened with the, the used vehicles maybe peaking out, right? Used vehicles, new and used, right. 7.7 and 1.6. Um, and then food and shelter, you know, as I just talked about. Pretty shelter remarkable up just across the board. percent yeah. Or, I'm seeing shelter up 0.6, transportation services up 2.1, sorry. Now, you could make the same case as well as in, I, I'd expect a little bit of a real estate pullback, right? That should have some impact on shelter for sure with these types of rates mm -hmm. going up. Uh, but man, we haven't seen it. So until it comes, Kevin, right? It's like a glimmer of hope, but we got to see it actually happen for, for the economics of the supply and demand to actually coincide to force some of this action going on. So with that in mind, all the conversation now is 75 basis points. I, I think I heard this morning uh, 20 or 30 percent chance that they even go a full point at the next meeting to the downside. What's your expectation for where we go from here, Kevin? Does the market uh, have you know, any room for upside until the next Fed meeting? I see, I see a lot of pressure to the downside right now with so much volatility as we await the, the Fed's next decision and then from there on out even going forward. Yeah, I, I think, I think you know, the, the first start of the morning is going to be a little bumpy, Tommy, but how this market finishes today how this market finishes the week is going to be vitally important because now we're in earnings season and earnings season is getting off to a little bit of a bumpy start with Delta doing well in revenues, but unable to deliver on the top line because of, well, you know, fuel prices and operational costs. So they missed on, on earnings per share higher on higher, higher on revenues. That may be a pretty good uh, indication of what we're going to get this quarter, Tommy. You know, this is going to get bumpy, Tommy, for, for, for sure. But how we finish today, you've got the NASDAQ down 2 and an eighth percent You've got the E-minis down about 1.6. How they finish today is going to be pretty important. It's going to show our traders discounting some of this CPI data, Tommy. Yeah, it's an interesting one, man. And I was talking about, I mean, folks, the number that they were supposed to come out with was 8.8% or something. So you come in at 9.1, right. Kevin, you've made the point so often, um, you got to look at the month over month number, because really, you know, the other 11 months, right? And you're just coming into this right. final month, comes in at 1.3 versus 1.1 for the headline, the core is still a little hot as well. Um, but where we go from here is pretty important. I think 75 is totally on the table right now with that type of print. Pretty remarkable, Kevin, that we're sitting at just, you know, we're adding almost 400,000 jobs a month, man. And we got inflation at 9.1 percent. You add those two together, the Fed's got to bring it, man. And it's pretty interesting to see where that market ends up and um, with its analysis of where we should be with that being the case. With that in mind, you mentioned it. We got earnings coming up, man. We kick it off this week and then we really get into it. What are you guys talking about at 12 o'clock today, Kevin? Three really good names to look at. Snowflake uh, will do in the A segment of the show. The B block, uh, like Folio, is going to cover McDonald's, some of the food companies. And then Ooh, we got to look at Boeing. After their deliveries yesterday and that move in the stock, we'll trade Boeing in, in, in the third segment today. So Snowflake, a McDonald's, and Boeing today. Three good stocks, man. I got Boeing up there. You're trading at 147, man. This thing, uh, kind of a max pain situation for so long. And McDonald's, they've done pretty well this year, actually. McDonald's trading at 251 right now. You came into the year at 271, but all things considered, holding up relatively well. And some of those growth stocks, man. Snowflake down from 400 less than a year ago, uh, but up from 110 a couple, couple, uh, couple months ago. Well, Kevin. I appreciate the time this morning. It's a busy one, I know. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, man, and uh, you have a great one. Buckle up, Tommy. This might be a bumpy one today. Have a great day. Quick fingers, man. Stay quick. That's right. Buckle up and stay <laughs> safe and uh, defined risk. That's one way to stay safe, right, Kevin? We appreciate it, man. Have a great one. Folks, tune in every trading day, 12 o'clock. I imagine today is going to be a great one with this type of market action. We jump over to the VIX right now. You get the VIX. All things considered, folks, I talked about this earlier in the week. That's quite a spike, okay? But you, the VIX just moved one point 
The VIX just moved one point from 2750 to 2850. All right. I'm ballparking. OK. Um, the VIX is already very elevated and it is pricing in these types of moves, folks. OK. I mean, you're talking about a VIX that just moved one point and we had the S&P trade down three percent in the span of about 15 minutes. OK. Keep that in mind because the VIX is not going down. This volatility is going to persist no matter what happens with the Fed meeting coming up. Later this month, we have a lot of volatility to come, folks, because we're basically at peak inflation right now. And yes, you can have hope that what the Fed is doing will work, that these numbers will wane. But until it happens, we're not there yet. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back for the open. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. Uh, maybe this market saves itself to a certain degree in the first at least 30 seconds of trading as you don't get a dramatic sell-off. Now, this looks like no move on this chart because it's such a mammoth move that we got at 830 on that number. 
let's put it down to a one minute to really see the action in terms of where we're going. But there's your pop. You pop about five, six points on the open. There's a little acceleration. S&Ps, though, you're still down 50 points. That's 1.3% in the red right now. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by 1.6% right now. You more, you are more than 100 points off the low, though, that you had of 11,479. Dow off 1.1%. Dow not catching too much of a bid at all from those lows. Bitcoin. Under 19,000, 18,960. Crude, little volatility in both directions, 96.14 in the price of crude. Uh, I imagine that market, though, folks, taking a look at the daily, okay? <clears throat> yes, I don't imagine, as Kevin made a great point, okay? You, you back it up to June 13th. There's the June 13th on this chart, all right? Look how the price of crude was peaking mid-month. Here's June 2nd for you. There is June 1st. Okay, you climb through the month. We make it to June 16th. Late in the month, you really start accelerating to 104, but you finish June and a 110. Since then, we've dropped as well. So you're going to see lower energy prices with gas prices to some degree. You got crude at $96, but here's the thing. I like technical trading. Okay, this is an area of technical support on this chart, folks. If you just take a look at the recent lows, the low from March, 9407. What did we just hit? 9367. Okay, you get just below that level. No, 90. Look at this. The low 9353. And you got within 14 pennies. 9367. Where did we make it in April? 9293 within a dollar of that low. And then we got to about $95 in April. Point being, yes, maybe we break through this level. But it's not an automatic that crude gets much below this price level. This seems to be the low boundary of where we've been trading right now. Do you really see crude going back to $60, $70, $80 even right now? I don't know. Can I see it popping back up to $105? Yeah, it was there like yesterday. So we'll see where crude goes into that conversation. The one thing I'll add about this CPI number that really struck out at me, okay, is <clears throat> the cost of shelter. Shelter costs overall are the biggest services component and make up a third of the overall CPI index, okay? So rent of primary residents rose 0.8% from May to June. We got the June numbers again. The largest monthly advance since 1986. Shelter costs overall climbed 0.6%. So rent has a big impact on that, okay? While home sales have slowed in recent months due to higher mortgage rates, economists expect rental inflation to continue to increase because it takes time for price changes to feed into the CPI. The cost of hotel and airline fares as well as car rentals fell from May to June. So those are decreases. But back to what's going to happen with rent prices, okay? Because shelter is one-third of the CPI, and that's going to have, obviously, a big impact in the months to come. What's going to happen as rates rise, potentially, what's going to happen as a mortgage rate is at 5.5 or 6%, making it very difficult for those to buy a house, maybe forcing even more people into the rental market, okay? Because to have that number be the highest number since 1986 on a rental level with what's happening in real estate, but that is stale data. It is July 13th. I think in the last month or so, month or two, as you've really seen the Fed bring it, and you've seen those mortgage rates hit some pretty astounding levels, uh, maybe that does have an impact on it. But on the rental level, there are lots going on on the rental level. Because uh, how are you going to buy a house, folks, when you get the mortgage rate at 5.5% and you have home prices up 30 or 40% just from last year in some markets in Florida, for instance? I mean, Tampa, I think the number was like 32% year over year, right? You're buying a house last year that's 300000 at 3.5%, you're buying that same exact house this year for 400,000 at 5.5%. I don't know, I just might rent the house maybe for, for six months a year uh, and play it out because if I'm renting a house, do I really see the market going up another substantial level? Everything's a risk reward, right? So let's say you have that $400,000 house. Yes, there's the possibility that house goes up to 420, 440,000. Maybe the market continues to go up, even with interest rates where they are, right? Maybe it just goes up 5% this year to a price level of 420,000. Well, what's the other side of that? The other side of that is maybe the market gives back 50% of that 40% rise that it had in 20, 2021. As in maybe that house that went from 300 to 401 year pulls back to 350, right? 
I don't see that rise continuing. So maybe that's where the rental market continues to struggle, as in prices continuing to rise because it's so difficult to be buying um, a house right now. Yeah. All right. What else do we have pulled up uh, here? Uh, Delta. Kevin mentioned it. I pulled up the chart. Trading lower. Profit miss. Signals. Cost increase spiral for airlines. Uh, carrier coping with surge in non-fuel expenses. Non-fuel expenses. Okay. Disruptions. Big disruptions, man. I'm seeing disruptions all over social media. Um, CEO cautions Delta shouldn't grow beyond our means. Fell short on profit expectations in the second quarter. High operating costs will persist through the rest of the year, weighing on a possible rebound as carriers try to capitalize on continued strong travel demand. Man, these airlines, right, travel, it just looked like a no-brainer that they were just going to be eventually uh, quite a buy, but $100 crude persisting, a big hampering on that and beyond, as in the cost of doing business right now, whether it's human capital, whatever it is, they're all going up in a big way. The other thing about CPI number to tie it back to, too, real wages year over year, I think they were down 4.4%. Wages not even keeping up even close. Real wages for Americans down almost 5% in the last year. That is a mammoth, mammoth number, folks, when you think most people, okay, are living dollar to dollar every month, okay? So if you got $1,500, what is that? 10% would be 150. That'd be like a $75 haircut on every $1,500, right? Yeah. Yeah, so for every $2,000 you got, you're taking 100 bucks away from somebody for 5%, just like that. And if you're living a dollar to dollar, $100 is a lot of money on a $2,000 monthly budget. That's going to impact things, folks. Uh, the adjusted profit of $1.44 was the number for Delta. They missed the $1.64 number. Um, yeah, but they're, 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 they're going to face some, face some tough woes, folks. The rhetoric around this. I think is what they're most worried about as this market catches a little rise. So not exactly doom and gloom exactly, but Delta, yeah, they continue. We're basically at session lows right now for Delta down 7.2%. Because think about it. It's not just about crude. They said it. Um, costs beyond energy are a big problem for them right now. And I imagine the other airlines taking a big hit. American gives back everything they had yesterday down 5.6%. United down 3.5%. We jumped domestically. JetBlue has been the worst of them all. JetBlue down about 3.6%. Spirit down about 1%. And Southwest right now down 3.1%. let us jump to the cruise ships. Look at that. I mean, everything's straight dramatically lower. Carnival down 4.2%. I mean, be careful on this one, folks. You want to gamble? You can buy some of these cruise ships potentially because you're at some pretty dismal levels. But here's the thing. The reason why this stock is trading at basically COVID lows is because they there is a distinct chance that they go bankrupt if there is a demand woe. Maybe we get another huge re recession right now coming out of this that hampers demand. They got so much debt on the books, man. Be careful of these cruise ships. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be back talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. Tiger Forex Report. Check it out on the front page. We'll be right back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DX. Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TF FNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets bouncing a bit off the lows. S&Ps, though, you're down 38 points. That's 1% in the red right now, trading at 37.85. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you heard the ad at the break there. If you haven't checked it out yet, head on over to the front page of TFNN.com. You'll see the Tiger Forex report right there by our man, Teddy Kegstad. He kicked this off a couple weeks ago. He's got new issues every week out there. He covers many of the pairs in the Forex market, he also covers that crude market. He also covers the bond market. You can use code TEDDY25, folks, okay, for this month only. It's already July 13th. Still comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So please, go check it out. Some great information out there. If you're not trading off that info, it's not something you have the time for. Whatever the reason, cancel. Get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you decide to keep it, you lock in 25% off for the monthly price of $97. That knocks you down to $72.75, and you get to keep that rate for as long as you subscribe. And, man, Teddy, what a great day to talk to you today. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. <clears throat> yeah, that CPI number sure has put a little uh, bomb off in the markets today, right? Whew. Um, where do you want to start, Teddy? We got, you know, I, the, we've been talking about the CPI a little bit, of course, 9.1%. You're going to see that everywhere on the news tonight. Um, tantalizing number for sure. Uh, but the core number was hot. Month over month was hot. We see rates right now, the 10-year back above 3%. We're at 3.02. Um, but we got a little bit of easing in those crude prices. I'm not sure if you caught the interview with Kevin Hanks, but he was talking about, you know, it is stale data that it's, it's almost the middle of July already. Um, what's your take on crude right now, maybe in CPI, or where we go from here? Where do you want to kick things off this morning? Um, well, CPI, you know, I seem to remember there was a certain person about a year ago that said that the big economic numbers, CPI being one of them, were going to be some of the biggest things that we need to watch moving forward over the next couple of years. And I think we can see that it's true, and we, it's going to be a long time before these numbers stop to be such have such an impact on the markets. So, I mean, the bonds had a nice spike high last week. They, they ended a correction. They tried to get them up, you know, again this week, and they peaked out yesterday. Anyone that read the Forex report saw that we hit that nice little target area. And I think that you're going to start to see them start to hit support. So the dollar is going to gain strength, you know. So, And I also think that the more the dollar gains strength and some of these other currencies start to get uh, – pound their new lows and stuff like that, that you're going to see oil start to not just stabilize, but start to rise again. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just talking about, I mean, from a technical level, right, if I was going to be buying or selling crude at this price level of $95, we're at $96.21 right now. Overnight, you were as low as $93.67. Um, mm. We haven't seen prices below $95 or so for a while, man. Um, right. You know, if you ever got back down to 75 I think the whole country would be cheering. 
Meanwhile, we've been sitting at above 100, and we were at 105 earlier this week. So, yeah, I see mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, maybe we break below that level, but it's it's a level that has found support for some time, man, mm -hmm. uh, in that crude market. It's the volatility factor, Tommy. You know, like, you can't look at crude the way it was trading, like, two or three years ago. You know, at, this, at these levels, you're going to have these major swings. Yeah, even even the market to that degree, right? We get the VIX at like 26 or 27, and it's amazing that there were some years I was looking back. I don't think we got above like 14 or something in the VIX for a mm -hmm. whole year. Um, not not the market <clears throat> we're dealing with right now, for sure. Hey, how about the euro US dollar? Because that's getting a lot of attention, man. I got some friends. Uh, one of my best friends lives over in Switzerland. Um, but just talking about, it, I got one friend going to Rome um, shortly. He's all jazzed, man, to buy some euros at parity. What's your take on the euro, man, as we as we reach parity this morning and we're chopping basically right at around parity right now on the euro U.S. dollar? Oh, I'm a sell rally forecast in the euro for a while. The EU, the whole the whole area is collapsing economically, so it's not going to stop at all. You know, and here's the thing, too, is that, you know, I've been saying this for a long time. It's not that the dollar is so strong. These other currencies are just that weak. And with what our Fed is doing, like people think that raising rates is a good thing right now and we should that they're just trying to catch up because they're behind the curve. They don't realize that what we're doing now is we're decreasing the velocity of money at a rate that we haven't done in decades. And what people don't understand about that is if you put if you were to have all the currencies at parity, let's say even just a year ago, okay, globally, all right, is on a global trade perspective now, it's costing every country around the world about ten to twenty percent more to do business with America or even outside of America, because things are denominated in dollars. That's going to be crushing economies across the globe over the next six to 12 months. So if you think that inflation's a problem, wait until you start to have the collapsing of banks and central, not central banks, but the banking systems around the globe and also manufacturing as well, because it's the damage. Is, we're, we're the ones that are at the forefront of causing this damage. We're going to look back a year and a half from now and be like, oh, we should have put the brakes on that. Yeah, it's quite a move, man. I got the Euro US dollar up there. I mean, I could put it on a daily. I got it up there on a weekly. It's a mm -hmm. one way trip. Basically, over the last 14 months, man, from May, we mm -hmm. were above 122. And uh, it's almost accelerating lower, man. Um, I can this, see us at 90 cents before the year's out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, really? that's, I mean, there's no bid on that chart, man, for sure. Just even being a technical trader and, and the mm -hmm. case you make, you know, is right. As in Europe versus the U.S., man, it's a tough. I mean, what are they going to do for the central bank over there when <laughs> they're dealing with so many issues, right? And, and right. they're dealing with an economic situation with the war going on with energy. They're reliant on, on Russia for energy um, at a time when they have inflation out of control and they're supposedly supposed to tame inflation at a time when they have so many economic right. problems right now. And and this is is now one of them for sure with right. the euro yeah. just getting pummeled, man. So I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's talk the bonds, can we, for a second? Because quite the move, mm -hmm. of course, for the bonds. Now the conversation I heard already this morning, they got uh, whether the Fed goes up potentially 75 or even a full point. I think I saw 30 percent, close mm -hmm. to even 40 or something like that, a full point. Uh, what are you looking for the bonds? Does that change at all this morning? Does it accelerate? Where, where are you looking for the 30 year? <clears throat> I'm looking at us to start hitting new lows again. The, the, where the high that we had a week and a half ago was really nice high as far as the ultimate correction from the last swing low that started in the middle of June. OK, so if the if the bear market is still there in place, we hit a nice little target there a week and a half ago. Then we had a nice little reprieve. The bonds started selling off again. And then you saw what happened over the last two sessions. We had a big bounce this week. And now this number is the catalyst I think is going to propel us back to making newer move lows. If that's the case and we start to get below, I would say, like 136 in the bonds, well, then we're looking at seeing 128 in the bonds probably. And then within the next two months, maybe even less than that. Nice. Yeah, I mean, just huge moves on that number this morning. It dropped two full points like that. Uh, we're mm -hmm. at 138.09. And yeah, the rates is going to be an interesting one um, as they affect everything right now going and your on. your 1% and forecast, too, if that really is something that's on the table. I mean, I made the comment long before they started the raising of rates that what they need to do is do a three-quarter, a one-point rate rate hike, then leave it alone, see what happens for a little while. And if you need yeah. to raise rates again, do it. But what we're doing now is not helping things. And I'm telling you, it's going to kill the velocity of money. And if I'm right on that one, 
we're going to have problems. You're going to be going to Walmart next year and being like, okay, well, now it's not a matter of food. It's about almost everything that's, that we buy from other countries because manufacturing plants are going to close. You know, sure. we're not going to be getting these goods. Some, it, it, there's things that not everybody buys on a daily basis, but you're going to see more and more shelf space either getting empty or it's going to be all filled with the same stuff. You know what I mean? So It's all well, for sure, man. Away. As a trader, it's pretty wild right now, the volatility that is just oh, everywhere. For us, this it's market. a dream come true. I mean, I hate right? to say it, but we're Can't driving. overstate it. No, I know. We're living yeah. it, so it seems like it's just status quo. But, folks, it is a trader's dream. Check out the Tiger Forex report, folks. Teddy, thank you so much, man. Have a great one. We'll You're talk welcome, to you next Tommy. Wednesday. Okay, Tina thanks, man. We'll right just back, launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF nn.com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now. Negative by just 32 points. A little bit of a pop, folks. If you're not in the Tiger's Den, great time to check it out, folks. This is an amazing time in the market. You heard Teddy talking about it. Uh, dream come true. You want the market to be higher, but as traders, folks, volatility, okay? There were years. Let's pull it up real quick, okay? It's almost hard to remember. That's how quickly time goes that this seems normal, that we get a 3% drop in the S&P, and then you get a pop of 1.5%, all right? You take a look at the VIX. And where do we go back? Yeah, you got to go back to, let's put it on a monthly max. There were years. What was the year? Yeah, 2017 was the best of it. How high did we get? 1728 one month was the highest we got the whole year of 2017. 
okay? Most of the year, you see where the bars were closing, 9, 10, 9, 10, a low of 9.52, a high, a high in the month of October, 13.20, didn't get above 13.20 for the whole month. The month of July of 2017 didn't get above 13.05, Okay, yeah, not quite the case since COVID. Point being, okay, head on over to the front page of TFNN. My dad was talking about the Tigers then just now. What did he say, folks? The S&P didn't make it. The S&P did not make it swing low. We are going higher. Pretty remarkable, right? On a 9.1% print on a monthly basis of 1.3%. The S&P's trade to 37.52. Since then, we've bounced about 30 points. You take a look at the daily, the lows, 36.39. So not quite on those lows. And I don't even think we got to the lows that you made June 30th, July 1st, and on July 5th. Uh, right near that number, but not quite the case. Where do we finish today? That'll be an important one. The reason why I bring it up, Head on over to the front page of TFNN. And, folks, please check out the Tiger Forex report. Teddy does an outstanding job every week in his report. He covers all of the major pairs. He covers the crude market. He covers the bond market. With everything going on right now, folks, those markets are very important to the general markets. Check out the Tiger Forex report. And check out the Tiger's Den if you're not in there, folks. The Tiger's Den, $1 for the whole year. Check it out. Great community of traders in there. Uh, every morning, this thing is going early. People are in there talking after hours now. It's a beautiful thing, as you would say. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil coming up next. Larry at 11. Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.